Welcome to episode two of The Save Point. Today we are joined by our special guest, Michaela, who is the inspiration for today's game, Hades, by developer Supergiant, who I've been a fan of since their first release, Bastion. Michaela, what can you tell us about your own experience with this game? First of all, thanks for having me. Um, my experience technically started in 2013. Um, I went to PAX East and I must have stopped by the Supergiant booth. And although I never got to play Bastion, I got the soundtrack. And basically it was a staple in my car pretty much every day um, from then for, for a while after. And I knew that like, I never played Bastion, but I knew that I wanted to give a Supergiant game a chance. So finally, when Hades officially released in 2020, that was the time. So I decided to just pick it up and I haven't really put it down since then. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I've been, I think I've dumped about 70 hours into this game in the span of a two week time. So we're just going to go ahead and jump right in. Uh, actually, you said you have a little piece of memorabilia you'd like to show the audience. Is that the CD? No, your shirt. Oh my God. Sorry. I always forget about this. So yes, I have like a radical 80s Zagreus shirt that I love and adore with all my heart. And yeah, so I, I figured we can't stream Hades without it. And I feel like my screen is super warped, but you get the idea. You can see the radical Zagreus. Absolutely. Just if, if Zagreus went to a rave. Yes, exactly. And he would. You know he would. All right. We're just going to go ahead and jump right into the game. This is... So this is the beginning of uh, our current run. It's going to be a Malfon fists run and um we'll start with the owl pendant which allows uh hopefully the first boon we get will be athena and we'll see uh what kind of abilities uh she's able to grant so if you'd be able to inform the audience a little about the background of uh, the mechanics of the game okay so it's kind of um there's a lot to it but game mechanics is that it is a series of procedurally generated dungeons. Um, it's a roguelike game, which, it, which in, in essence means that you play, and then when your health runs out, you die, and then you must begin again at the very beginning. Hades is very special, though, because with each death comes an upgrade of sorts. So you can collect items, begin to upgrade your character, and also get little bits of story, which makes every, even a failure, really rewarding. So essentially, when you die, it's not like you feel like you failed. In fact, sometimes you kind of look forward to it. Um, because when you die, you get to go back home and then speak to your side quest characters. You get to upgrade a little bit. And then you get a little bit more of the story and the um, and a power up every single time. So that's one of the reasons why it's so good, um, even in the roguelike sphere. Absolutely. And every time, it, that just creates an unparalleled replayability value for this game as well. So I'm actually here in uh, Chaos's domain. So Chaos is the primordial creator of all things, and we weren't able to hear it right here and now, but even the pronouns it uses, because um, it's omniscient, omnipotent being, um, that it uses uh, Chaos themselves use they, them pronouns. Yeah, and I love that because, I mean, it, number one, it just fits with their personality for sure. They, I mean, something so, so uh, like omniscient and omnipotent would be pretty genderless, I believe. And also, chaos encompasses so much that, of course, they are the perfect embodiment of the they them pronoun. Like. Yeah, it's like they, no one can put chaos into a box. Oh, no. No, no, that's like the opposite of chaos. And that's, I feel like that's a lot of what um, many people are dealing with today are uh, explored in many of the themes here in Hades. Oh, for sure. And it goes from even the, the pronouns like they, them for chaos, the, the type of romances that Zagreus is able to have. They seem incredibly nuanced, although they have 
origins or at least we know that they existed back in ancient Greece. So a lot of the things that people think are, for example, progressive now really did exist 2000 plus years ago. We're just kind of rediscovering them. Absolutely. And they are um, absolutely not afraid just to bring that straight to the forefront and how um, it's incredibly normalized in in this game and how it's just uh, no, nobody questions why people make their uh, make the sort of, the of chaos has been choices for romance that they do. It's just it's just there. For sure. And I mean, imagine having that in real life. Imagine that you can pursue what you like in a way that is consensual and adult in a way that you don't have to worry what anybody else thinks because you know that they just accept it. Like, how revolutionary is that? Yeah, I, I mean, it's revolutionary in today's day and age, and yet it was standard practice all the, all the way back then. Oh, yeah. Will... And if you don't believe it, look at a vase. <laughs> oh, what can you tell us about this vase? Um, well, it's, if you look at Greek, uh, like, Greek pottery, they'll show, they'll depict, um, quite, like, quite, you know, X-rated, uh, oh, scenes. I see. And I'm fairly certain you would find, um, you would find images of Achilles here, which is actually a character in this game. And what do we yes. know about, yeah, what do we know about Achilles and his partner? So, again, as always, my knowledge of him is going to be very, very surface level. But what I know is that Achilles, I believe he fought in the Battle of Troy, if yes. I'm correct. Um, Patroclus was his partner. In Hades, the game, the way that they, the, the way that they handle it Something. is that Patroclus sort of uh, um, fought on behalf of Achilles. He didn't want to fight in the war, but that's how Patroclus died. And then in the game, he was sent to Elysium where the great warriors are laid to rest. However, um, uh, it, that upset Achilles in life so much that he began that he actually fought. And I believe in the true myth, Apollo guided the hand of Achilles' enemy, and then they hit the arrow, I believe, into his heel, which was his weak point, and he eventually died. And in the game, like going back to the game, kind of flip-flopping from the mythology, um, he started a pact with Hades to work essentially as a trainer for his son in his house. But he wasn't able to, to visit his partner in Elysium. And just the way they described it here in the game as well, like, uh, nobody questioned uh, the nature of Patroclus and Achilles' relationship. They simply no. accept the fact that there is there is love there and and it nothing else mattered. Exactly. It breaks Sagrius' heart to know that he couldn't see Patroclus in Elysium. Like it, it took him a while to figure out, like to put two and two together and realize that it That's was he was uh, Patroclus was talking about oh. um about oh. Achilles and oh. vice versa and all his um his very mournful type of messages in the journal you. were about Patroclus. Fine. So, but yeah, nobody like nobody thinks anything of it because they're like, that's his partner, that's who it is. And in fact, the the, the funny thing is that Zagreus, I don't know if we have this conversation yet, but Zagreus has a conversation with Achilles to talk about like having himself having multiple partners in like of course a consensual way where everyone is knowledgeable about it. And then Achilles is a little uncomfortable because he's he's a one person type of guy, which is lovely. And he was talking about, he's like, well, you know, it's normal. As long as everyone's okay with it, that's fine. I, but I like believe for we me, just like... had this conversation with him. Um, yeah, about uh, uh, Zagreus, Thanatos, and, Me and Megara now. Yeah, he's like, is this abnormal? He's like, no. And in fact, in the Greek pantheon, it's quite, yeah. it's quite usual and normal for them to have multiple partners. Except for your father. He has Persephone, and that's huh. pretty much it. Oh, oh, which I think is lovely. Oh, Hades, gosh. the eternal monogamous. Like, the only faithful it. man in the entire Olympian pantheon. That's why I like him so much. I really do like Hades for that specific reason. He was the only one who was loyal and faithful and like a true person who was truly, truly loyal and dedicated to his partner. So much that he like had pity on her. Well, not really pity so much as compassion for her and allowed her to be up in the surface for, um, 
for at least four months out of the year so that she could see her mother. Yeah, uh, so let's talk about um, the legend between Persephone and Hades, because that's the entire theme, uh, starting point of the, of, of the scenario. Yeah. So what, again, surface level, what I know about oh, Hades and Persephone is that Hades took Persephone down to the underworld. And Persephone is the goddess of Verdue, which is basically like the greens and life in the world. And he, so they eventually had a fairly healthy relationship regardless of how it happened eventually. But eventually she really wanted to come back up. Like, and her mother Demeter missed her. And in her sadness, created a world of winter. But so eventually Hades again took compassion on Persephone and allowed her to come back up to the surface. To enable springtime through fall, and yeah. then when she's in the underworld, that's technically winter. So that's the good and so the winter. current the current state of the game as it is, we are still in the point where Demeter doesn't know where Persephone is yet, and yeah. the world has been plunged into that eternal winter, which you will um, the audience will be able to see once it reaches the surface. And so, just the running themes from the game regarding family, um, trust, and how, like, how can we see that here in today's society? Well, a lot of ways, really. It shows how complicated family can be, really. Like, oh, if yeah. you look at it, the Greek yeah, Pantheon's pretty complicated. So, and I like how Zagreus really tries to bridge the gap between his family as well. Like, he obviously has a really good relationship with his family in Olympus, so even though he sort of eventually learns about a lot of their treachery in a way. But when I mean a lot, I really just mean Zeus. Hmm. <laughs> like, it shows how complicated things can be and how, like, if you, like, sometimes if your family member is agreeable, obviously if they don't have some sort of, like, personality disorder or something preventing them from bridging the gap, like, you can kind of sometimes help to fix things that are broken, which is a really I, beautiful thing. I definitely feel a big theme of this game is is reconciliation and redemption. Yeah, for and sure. Even when some people have been through hell, uh, has taken each other through hell, there is still just that spark of hope that you're able yeah. to reconcile. Like, for example, in the beginning of this story, Hades is a tool. He oh, yeah, is so absolutely. awful to Zagreus, and he withholds information from him. I don't know if I would go so far as to say he straight up lies, but I think that there's definitely manipulation there that, like, makes me feel like a, a deep discomfort. But then, the more that you learn, the more you're, you're able to learn why he does this. There is a motivation for it that isn't just steeped in himself or a narcissism or anything like that. There is a real reason for protecting Persephone and indeed pr pr uh, protecting the entire world from, from complete uh, implosion in a way. Um, and then you learn like the kind of bad guy isn't so much your father, even though he's kind of a jerk. Um, it's more like it's, it's Zeus. <laughs> yeah, it, it's always Zeus. It's Zeus. It's like, in hey. the Hades story, hey, uh, Zeus is the one who took Persephone down to, uh, down into the underworld. Oh yeah, like uh, Persephone was seen as as some kind of consolation prize. Yeah, and like, but she she explains that she's like, oh, I wanted to leave Olympus. It was fine. In fact, like, your father is very complicated, but we got along great together. Which Olympus is like, really was a bunch lovely. of jerks anyway. Oh god, yeah. You can tell even like in the game itself the way that the characters get really jealous of one another. If you have a situation where you have to pick between the different boons, the other one will get jealous and attack you. Oh yeah, we should be able to see that here shortly. I've got a whole mess of boons right now. I think I've got Poseidon, Athena, Ares, and Dionysus. So hopefully we'll see a lot of that sort of family dynamic in action. But um, because a lot of Greek mythology was based upon um, the uh, the dynamics of just normal people of normal people, because uh, uh, yeah, we may, we may say that people were born in the image of God, but no, God God in the mythos, the mythologies are always written in the image of the people that wrote them. 
for sure. And if you want to think of it like in, the, in that way too, like you can just think that people create their own gods in their own image as well. And Danger Man is back and he says, isn't jealousy a big running theme of Greek mythology? <laughs> well, we're about to see. Because sure. uh, the, the, Lerna the Lernaean Hydra, Lerny in this case, um, yeah, he was uh, originally slain by Hercules, who was born of born of jealousy between Zeus and Hera. Mm -hmm. And he had to prove himself at the trials. Well, what, I think it was twelve trials. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, but honestly, Hercules is a whole another bag of worms. Uh, yeah, right now we're just focusing on the trials of Zagreus, just trying to get, just literally fighting our way out of hell right now. And, and doing a great job, mind you. Uh, oh yeah, it, that's not me, that's just the game doing its own thing. I see, yeah, you're auto-playing. <laughs> God, I wish it'd be so much easier to, to carry a conversation. Um, yeah, so for sure. I, and you're you're going against hubris, which is another theme of Greek mythology. <laughs> Speaking of hubris, excessive pride, let's talk about the story of Sisyphus, which oh, is boy. this guy. Right? Oh, I switched over. Oh, you got the boys. Yeah, I, I switched over the um, the little thing I, that was supposed to be. Oh my god, they're and, so uh, cute. Sisyphus. But um, yeah, so Sisyphus was is another Greek um, icon we can encounter in this game, and um, a lot of uh, and a lot of what Sisyphus has to go through, I feel like, is what many people in today's working era can relate to. Oh, for sure, because uh, Sisyphus, even though like with Sisyphus, he kind of earned his punishment. Whereas I think that normal people don't necessarily. So for example, what Sisyphus did was he tricked, he was a trickster and he tricked Thanatos, the god of death, and Hades into uh, not letting him die. So he was supposed to die and he convinced them to continue his life. And they were so angered by that, that his punishment was to be sent to Tartarus where he lugged a boulder up a hill and right at the moment where he believed that, that the top of the hill was there and the boulder could just roll down the other side, the boulder just rolls right back in his direction, square one again, starting from the very beginning. So I think life in general is very Sisyphean. And even this game is a great metaphor for a Sisyphean tale as well. And uh, just all that effort and for what just to be returned and sent right back to where you started. And yeah, Every day. Uh, and uh, the thing is with the fact that um, it makes it sound like sound like Sisyphus deceived the gods in some way or another, but what what actually happened, I think, is that Sisyphus simply beat the ones in charge at their own game. Like these were the rules and laws set forth by by Thanatos, by the gods, gods of death, and yet, um, and yet Sisyphus was able to use the system to his advantage and yet he was punished sisyphus was punished for it yeah i think that in real life when you can game the system like that in a way that still kind of adheres to the rules i feel like there's more there's a risk but there's more a reward yeah. that oh here's jealousy so right here's jealousy jealous. right here so we're gonna take except demeter's boot oh, thank you little sprout. little sprout i think that's so adorable because he's her actual grandson, she just doesn't know it. Yeah. It's gonna make Athena jealous. And then it makes Athena jealous. So, and I feel like a good example of regular people gaming the system against God are what we see in the GameStop, uh, the GameStop uh, situation that we have currently. So That's a great example. Yeah, so we have regular retail investors going up against the gods of the stock market, these hedge funds with billions of dollars, and we beat them at their own game. And yet, so you want to know what, what these hedge funds did? They cheated the system and created a situation where we're essentially just we're pushing that forward. And, and they're using, they, ch they completely changed the rules in a way, into a way that only benefits them. 
Exactly. They mm -hmm. buy out stocks they feel are in danger, and that makes mm -hmm. them more money because uh, they don't. Uh, I think they end up selling it back in a way that makes them more money in the end. Yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, the uh, because uh, what happened was uh, the head fund, hedge fund owners I can use this. were in charge of um, were are, are also in charge of the brokerage firms, the place where the stocks are traded, bought, and sold. So you want to know what they did? They halted the trading of GameStop. So no more people could buy GameStop, therefore no more people could farm the hedge fund industry. And yet, so people lost out on the opportunity to basically gain more money, gain more resources, and beat the hedge fund in their own game. Yeah. So they, they really did pull the strings there. It's kind of um the way that, the best way I think it was explained to me because I am a musical theater geek, is that think of the producers and the plot of the producers. It's just basically the producers for the stock market. Yeah, and in this case, like the stock market, the, the hedge fund owners, they're, the, they're Hades, they're the Greeks, they're the Greek gods, and we are Sisyphus trying to game the system but then get punished yeah we can we get punished for following their rules and beating their game oh for sure and it really did expose i think the one thing that was important for that is that it really peeled the rock so that you could see what's underneath oh yeah and now the only question is how do we fight our way out of hell to get out of this shitty situation that that the the people with power have put us in. I wish I could answer that question. I, I ask them myself that every day. Best thing I can do is just play games, inform the people, and have a good time while I'm doing it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and speaking of having a good time with a friend. Hey! Hey! <laughs> so we just introduced a romantic uh, subplot with the God of Death. I love that. I will, like, I will defend that. <laughs> I was, um, oh god, speaking of that, I feel like it's just very much in my own, like, nature to be a little darker than normal people. So, oh, yeah. I, we were watching uh, Little Women yesterday, and, like, out of the blue, I was like, oh yeah, my family buried Alcott. And then Ginger kind of forgot what that meant. <laughs> I, no, I, so I've never seen Little Women yet. Give us a little background on that. Oh, it's absolutely lovely. It is um, a book about a family in the 1860s, just of these, um, I forget how many daughters, I think it was four daughters. Um, and just their, their lives and them like uh, being together and like just kind of being, being women in the 1860s and like kind of like them professing that they have their own lives, their own intentions, like their own independence, which is just, it's a very like in the I just, 1800s. I just that I think it's, yeah. Wow. Like that's unheard of. Women having choices. Yes. Uh, indeed. And like one of them has like a career, like a lucrative one, and like it kind of goes through like her life and her dreams and the pitfalls and her sisters and some of the jealousies they have and, so, and sometimes the sacrifices that you have to make for the you. ones that you love. And it's it's just a lovely story. But Alcott, because uh, she lived in Concord, Mass, which is where my family's from, my family happened to own the funeral home there. So that's why I'm like, if, they, if I'm like, oh yeah, we buried Thoreau, or Alcott, that's oh, fine. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so, oh, so how does that relate to your own family? Yeah. Go on. So my family is, uh, they own one, one of the funeral homes in Concord, Mass, and they were around since the late, well, the funeral home's been around since before the late 1800s. However, my, I think it was my great-grandfather or great-great-grandfather came to America from Ireland. I believe they bought a farm and he started out as a grave digger and then eventually like worked his way up to, and he eventually bought the funeral home and it's been like sort of in my extended family's name since then. And they, they took care of, uh, they, they took care of uh, making sure that they're taking care of the family of Louisa May Alcott, the writer, Ralph Waldo, well, Ralph Waldo Emerson, the writer, and Henry Get David Thoreau. Here. And they still currently uh, maintain their grave here. sites and make sure that that's, you know, that's good and it's pretty and all that jazz. Oh my. 
Yeah, you married Alcott. Married? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What, what, what was the... Buried. Oh, you buried him. I, I heard married. I'm sorry. I was in the middle of trying to beat the crap out of Theseus. Yeah, no, no worries. Yeah, they, they, my family buried Louisa May Alcott. <laughs> and Henry the, David Thoreau and Ralph Waldo Emerson. Oh wow! That's, I mean, that's and impressive. I bet it's in here. My great grandmother thought that Henry David Thoreau was a bum. Oh god, what's the story there? So the reason why is because I mean he was transcendental, so he genuinely believed in a slower lifestyle and a return back to nature, which is lovely. I agree with him on that, and, and I agree with him on a lot of things, for instance. But he would come to my family's farm, and my great grandmother would probably have a pie, like on the windowsill cooling, he would smell the pie, and then he would invite himself over to eat the pie. And so they were like, look at that bum. Oh <laughs> Get away from grandma's pie. Sort of. Like, excuse me. Phrasing. Pie is for the family. Of the oh. food that we grew. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. So pie, pie, in this case, pie is not a euphemism. Ah, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I was like, I got that. And I was like, do I want to expand on yep. that? This stream just turned 18 plus. Is that where the, the French came from in my family? <laughs> oh lord. Well, I mean, if, <laughs> when the family makes good pie, I'm just saying. I can't believe you're already in the Temple of Sticks. And I feel like this just started. This is actually, I'm going pretty slow. Uh, we're at 26 minutes and I'm still not at 8. I feel like you blinked. Like, I blinked and then hi. Yeah, I mean, like, the, the the bow is definitely slower than this. Yeah, no, if, if I had gotten the right moves from Athena, um, this would have gone much faster. Wow. And this is fast. Like, you have 22 minutes on the clock. On the heat gauge where, um, you can pick a heat gauge where each section of the underworld can only take nine oh, yeah. minutes. That one is like the bane of my existence. And I've, done, like, ah, I've done seven minutes. minutes. I've done se seven crap. minute clears, yeah. Holy crap! Yeah, my best was like 23. Oh no, uh, so you get you get nine minutes to clear um, Tartarus, uh, nine, uh, and then it adds an extra nine minutes onto um, uh, Asphodel, and now when I cleared uh, six, I'm gonna get another nine minutes, but I've, I've done I've done the seven minute too. Wow. I've no, I don't think I've beaten it on set the seven minute yet, because I'm just all kinds I mean, of scared. It, especially especially with the speed of a Malphon run with uh, no merciful, merciful end at least, uh, it it just makes for an easy uh, it just makes for an easy heat number. All right, and now we are Damn. ready to go. Kill Which aspect of Malphon um, are you using? Uh, the second one. So, this aspect of Malphon. So, this aspect of Malphon. Um, the special is a magnetic fist. It draws uh, enemies close to you and then specials the crap out of them. Just uppercuts the crap so out of them. I'll have to. I'm going to have to try that now because I'm like I wanted to watch your stream to be educated because I am a, a bow bitch, and I will continue. Hey, don't say that well. about my friend. Ah, I like that. That's the best. All right, so let's see. So let's talk daddy issues. There's a fishing unit. You're like, oh. let's talk something really like important. I'm like fishing. I um. Uh... I actually got dialogue from Hades saying, "There's a fish in front of me. There's or there's a there's a resident of Poseidon's domain in front of me, and he is just mocking me." Well, I'm going yes, to I've gotten that one too. And then it's like, "Are you inviting me fishing?" And he's like, "No, I know I'm going to kick your ass again." And you're like, this is "And so then I'm going to kill that fish. You're going to get my spear, and then that fish is going to get it." <laughs> I like how he's still sassy, like, even after you got Persephone back. Like, he's still mean. Yeah, it's like, this is my job now. <laughs> I love that. It's so relatable. Like, speaking of Hades being relatable, I love all the, the job euphemisms they use. Like, as, like, a full-time worker, I can definitely get behind that. 
And yeah. all the, the, like a lot of the, the talk at the House of Hades sounds like water cooler talk. And I just, I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's like the, Hades has become just another office space. Oh, and yeah. Then, and then each character should get interviewed, breaking the fourth wall. And then... <laughs> Oh, that'd be hilarious. Hades, uh, Hades stole Zagreus' stapler. <laughs> and then he stole... Oh, my stapler. Yeah. And then uh, it'd be an interview of Hades with, like, my son has no work ethic at all whatsoever. That's like, true, he was. And then it'd be an interview with Zagreus, like, hey, maybe if Dad wants a stickler, morale is good. I love it. I'm here for it. Yeah, and then it would like zoom into like Hades' face from his office. And oh, he's dead. And Woo! 30 minutes so fast. and 39 seconds on the stream. Uh, I think this will be... This is as good, uh, good of any time. Thank you for joining us. We shall see you back at home. Alright, this is uh, Lieutenant Mogar on Instagram. And Michaela D. London from Twitter. On the Twitter. It's a very cursed Twitter, so don't even go there. <laughs> Michaela, do you have any parting words for our audience? Well, thank you so much for joining, and hopefully we'll come back again for more Hades or just more games. Michael is an awesome person, so go follow him and subscribe to his channel. Why aren't you doing that? Do that now. <laughs> and remember, kids, stay in school and don't do drugs, but don't do dare either. It's bad. Bye. <laughs> Bye.